Um, <clears throat> please remember to complete the register so that then we can have that out of the way. So today we're going to discuss ANOVA, how to calculate the analysis of variance and <clears throat> how to complete the table because with ANOVA, um, some, sometimes when you answer questions, you will require to complete the table in order for you to be able to answer the questions that they are asking you to do. And uh, always remember, all our sessions, we're going to refer to the Newman era prompt, where we're going to ask ourselves before we answer the question, what is the question asking us to do? What are the facts that are given in the question? What are the formulas that we need to be aware of? And then only then we can start calculating the question asked. OK, so let's look at our session plan for the next couple of weeks. Uh, today we're looking at ANOVA. I've to take, um, taken out the F test for two population variants. We can do that at a later stage. We're only going to concentrate on the ANOVA analysis today. And then the following week, we're going to look at the chi-square test, and then we look at the non-parametric tests um, that we have, the three non-parametric tests. And then we'll look at the linear regression, and lastly, then it will be the time series. So if we have enough time, then we can go back to the F-test um, for two population. Okay, so that is the schedule for this month. Do you have any question or query before we start with the session for today? No, no questions. If there are no questions, then we can just dive in into this week's session. Like I said, we're going to be looking at ANOVA, the analysis of one-way variants, <clears throat> uh, which is um, uh, the requirements for us to do this, we need to know the formulas. You need also, I forgot here to mention, not only the formulas, but you also need to have your table. Um, and I'm not sure how your tutorial letters this year looks. If you have um, a tutorial letter in a PDF format and they've put the, the tables, we will require those tables. So this one is from the 2020 tutorial letter 101. So they did give them some tables at the back. And today we're going to be using this, but we're going to be using the F test. So we, we need to go and look for the critical values of F. And that will be the table that we are using for today. So this will be the table that we are going to be using. I will explain it a little bit later. So coming back to our presentation, we also need the calculator. Remember, this is math. You need to be doing some calculations. And we will be introducing so many formulas that you also need to remember and know how to calculate them. OK. By the end of the session, you should be able to learn the concepts of experimental design. You should be able to know how to use one-way analysis of ANOVA to test for the difference amongst the means of several population, which we refer here um, amongst the groups. Uh, and then also later on, we're going to learn how, to, how do we use a randomized block design to do the same, to test uh, the differences amongst the groups. So in terms of the ANOVA setting, an investigator in a nutshell, wants to control one or more factors of interest. And this way, each factor needs to contain two or more levels. So they at least should be uh, more than two levels within that. For example, if you have uh, uh, male and females as one of the gender category, and then on the other side, you have yes and no, you can do a chi-square test. But if you have male, female, and unknown, and on the other hand, you have TV, bus, um, chocolate, ice cream, 
um, in terms of things that people are interested in, then you need to do because you are co uh, comparing two factors. You need and those two factors have different levels. So uh, the gender has three levels and things that you are interested in has five levels. So therefore you can use an ANOVA. So if they only have one level or two levels, then you need to use the chi square test. OK, and the levels can be either numeric or categorical. So with ANOVA, there is no problem whether it's numeric or categorical, you can still use an ANOVA test. And the different levels uh, produces different groups, so they cannot be the same groups. So they need to be, pro they need the, 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 the two levels or the different levels within that group needs to be different in each group as well. Think of each group as a sample from a different population. And that's what you need to always bear in mind when you are working with the ANOVA as well. You just need to make sure that you think of them as two samples that were selected from two different um, population, even though they might come from the same population and you just want to check the differences amongst the groups, but um, think of it as if like they are distinct. Um, <clears throat> We need to also observe the effects on the dependent variable. So you will have to choose which one will be your dependent variable. Um, and that uh, when you do the analysis, that way you will need to make sure that the groups are, are, are different. And also you need to convert all the categorical into a interval scale so that you are able to apply the numerical I'm uh, sorry, to apply the ANOVA. And when it comes to the experimental design, remember now with the experimental design, it means then you can select uh, things that you just want to experiment with before you run your normal data analysis as well. So you first need to plan uh, how you're going to collect your data uh, that you're going to be using in order for you to calculate the ANOVA. So in terms of the ANOVA, we can run three different types of ANOVA. We can run a one-way ANOVA, which is the one that we're going to be concentrating on, as well as the randomized block design. We're going to look at that. In your module, you're not going to cover any two-way ANOVA, which looks at the interaction effect. Uh, we only look at one effect as well. Okay, so uh, in this session, we're not going to touch too much um, under the techy and multiple crema uh, comparison. We're not going to touch much in terms of Lavin test for homogeneity of variant. And also we're not going to touch much in terms of the techy multiple comparison. You will have to go and read about that because those form part of the tutorial here. We only deal with the skills, but I'm going to show you at a basic level how to do an ANOVA test. OK. So if we need to do a completely randomized design, so therefore it means our experimental units needs to be randomly assigned to the group, and we need to assume that the subjects are homogeneous. We also need only one factor or independent variable needs to be part of the analysis, and that factor needs to have at least two or more levels, and then we are able to analyze one way and ANOVA if those assumptions are met. So in order to evaluate the difference amongst the means of three or more groups, um, also the following assumptions as well needs to also be met as well. Your population needs to be normally distributed because ANOVA is also one of those um, uh, test that you run on a normally distributed uh, population because you also want to infer back the results back to the population. <clears throat> Your population should have equal variances and the sample should be randomly and independently drawn and that is why you need to treat them as if like they come from two separate population. So for example, accident rates for first, second and third shift expected mileage for the five brands. So those are the uh, the accident rates, and we can test uh, the difference amongst all this uh, group of accidents. 
uh, the, um, sorry, the, uh, we can test the group of the shift expected mileages in terms of the accident rate as well. So <clears throat> because with ANOVA, we also state an hypothesis because we're testing something, we're testing the difference be amongst the group. So therefore, it means we need to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis will state that all the mean populations are equal. So depending, so for example, the previous one, we had three shifts. So it means we can say uh, the mean for shift one, mean for shift two, mean for shift three, and so forth and so forth. They are all equal. All population means are equal. That is, means that there are no factor effect in terms of that. So there are no variations amongst uh, the groups that you have selected or the groups that you are using. The alternative will state the opposite and it can state that all of them or not all of them. So <clears throat> your alternative hypothesis will state that not all the population means are the same. So there can be one or two population means that are the same, but not all of them should be the same. At least one population mean is different and that that will mean that there is an a factor a factor effect um and it will refer to that um the uh with that factor effect uh, that does not um uh, mean that they all the population mean will be different for the hypothesis for the alternative hypothesis so there might be some that are the same as well so let's look at this example of stating the null hypothesis. So if we say that the population mean are equal, therefore if there are three populations, you can see that they are blue, red, and green, and all of them have the same mean. At the dotted line, they, are, they all have the same mean. So the null hypothesis is true in terms of this, and we can test that. So the alternative will state otherwise. The alternative might state that uh, the mean one is not the same as the mean two is not the same as mean three or we can say the mean one <clears throat> is the same as mean two but it's not the same as mean three or it can state that the, all of them are not the same um, that is the null hypothesis so at least one of them should not be the same as the other the others or all of them can be different okay so how are we going to calculate the ANOVA we need to understand certain uh, definition or certain calculations. So in order for us to calculate the analysis of the, uh, the one-way ANOVA variance, which we need to make sure that we understand that. With an ANOVA, we always want to calculate what we call the total variance. And a total variance it's partitioned into two groups or parts. And what do we mean by the total variance? The total variance in formula format is called also, it can also be referred to the sum square of, uh, or the sum, the sum of squares, or the total sum of squares, which is just the aggregation uh, of the variation of individual data values across the various factor levels. Then we also, because it's split into two and it's split into the group and the errors, because they should, there will be some marginal errors in between. So therefore, um, the SS group also referred to the sum square among the groups, or we can call it among the group variation. It is just the variation among the factor sample means. Um, and then the errors, which we can call them the sum square within uh, within the groups. So those we get within the groups, the errors. I will show you just now. I'll demonstrate how um, each one play a role. Uh, the within the group error, which we can also call it the within group variation. Uh, it's variation that exists among the data values within a particular factor. And <clears throat> to explain that in a way, so remember that we said total variation um, is your total. It's your. We said it's your aggregated total variation of the individual data values across uh, various factor levels. So now, in terms of mathematical formula, the 
total variation or the sum square total, we can calculate it by using the sum of your x squared minus the sum of your x squared divided by m. So those two are different. So the other one is the sum of x squared, which means it's x times um, it will be x plus x plus x plus x. Uh, sorry, it's x squared plus x squared plus x squared plus x squared um, minus the sum of x. It will be when I add all the x's together, adding them up and taking the square of the total of all the x's together. So those two are different, divide by n. And in terms of explaining what I just um, talked about in terms of the total variation. So <clears throat> here we have three groups, group one, group two, group three, and each group has different values in it or different types in it. We can see that the, uh, the, uh, the green dots represent group one. So if you look at <clears throat> your dots are represent the, the points or the responses in terms of your X value. So if I take the mean of all these values, so which is the mean of group one, group two, group three, and I'm able to see those differences between the data points and the mean, and that is your total variance that we are talking about. Um, the variance amongst the group, that is the SS group is given by n times the sum of your x observation, my, uh, the mean of the x minus the mean of all of the uh, groups that you have squared. So therefore it means if I have three groups, so I'm going to calculate the mean. Let's go back there. I'm going to calculate the mean of this group. So that will be mean one. I'm going to calculate the mean of group two, that will be mean two, and I'm going to calculate the mean of group three, that will be my mean three. But I'm also going to calculate the mean of all these three groups, which is this mean x bar. So in terms of your sum amongst the groups, so it means group one, mean of group one minus the mean of all of the groups squared plus the mean of group two minus the mean of all of the groups squared and so forth. When we do the example, you will see how to use this formula. And this will just show you the variation to the difference amongst or that exists among the groups. So if I have group one and group two here, you can see that the mean of these two groups are different as well. And then we also have what we call the mean square measure. Uh, the mean square group for the group, since it corresponds to the sum square of groups, the mean square group is given by your sum square group divided by the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom in this instance will be your number of groups you have minus one. So it will be the number of groups that you have minus one. You're within the group variation, which is also called the SSE, is given by the total. It's given by your sum square total, your SST minus the sum square error, which is your SS, your, sorry, not the SSE, but the SS group. So your sum square total minus the sum square group will give you your SSE or the within group variation. And in terms of the mean square error, you will calculate it by using the sum square error divided by the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom here will be the number of group times how many um, uh, sample sizes you have minus one. And this will just be summing the variation within each group and then adding them all over the other groups as well. And you will see when we look at the ANOVA table how all this come into play. So obtaining the sum square measures, we already explained this. So we did look at the sum square among, which is your SS, your MS group and your MSE, which is the mean square within. Uh, we did look at the uh, degrees of freedom. And then <clears throat> the MS total, we, uh, which is our uh, mean square total, is 
uh, given by the sum square total divided by n minus one, where n is just your number of uh, the all the, the 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 values of the group as well. So, if there are three groups and there are five, 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 five each, n will be equals to fifty because it will be three times five. Okay. So this is the one way ANOVA table that we need to complete when we answer the question. So you need to have the source, which is either the group or the error and the total. You need to have the degrees of freedom for the group, it's K minus one, for error it's K times N minus one, and for the total is N minus one. The sum of squares, which are your SS, so you will calculate your SS group. Remember your SS group is N times the sum of your mean group, minus the mean of all the groups squared. And then we also need to calculate the SSE, which we also remember that the SSE is your SST minus your SS group. Therefore, it means you need to first calculate your SS group and then calculate your SST and your SST, you calculate it by using uh, uh, the sum of the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n. So you will have to calculate the error first and then calculate, uh, sorry, you will calculate the group, then you will calculate the SS total, therefore you will, then you can calculate your SS error. And then the MS error, which will go into the mean square block, will be your SS group divided by the degrees of freedom. So you just take your sum square divided by the degrees of freedom. The same will happen with the mean square error. You take the SS error divided by the degrees of freedom. That is not the end. You need to also calculate the test statistic, which is your F test statistic. In order to calculate the F test statistics for the one way ANOVA, then we use the MS group divided by the MS error and that will give you your F-test statistics. But you are not done because you need to make sure that because we're doing an, a hypothesis testing, we need to check whether are we going to reject the null hypothesis or accept the null hypothesis. Therefore, it means you need to go ahead and find your critical value. And finding the critical value, we're going to use the degrees of freedom, and we always use the degrees of freedom by looking at the degrees of freedom for the group and the error. So your degrees of freedom for number one will be K minus one, which is the for the group uh, or for amongst the group. And your degrees of freedom for error will be within the group. Will be within the group and that will be K times N minus one, which N is your sample size. Okay, so how do we find the Degree, uh, the critical value, you will find the critical value by coming to this table where it looks, um, it gives you the critical values of F distribution and you're going to look at the value of your alpha as well as the degrees of freedom. In terms of your table, I'm going to rotate it. Uh, where is my rotate? Okay, so if you look at this table, it will always be split by, if I scroll to the left, it will be split by the uh, alpha value. So if they tell you that the alpha is 0, 0,05, so you will come to this side. If they say alpha is 0, um, other number, so this is still 0, 0,05, there are other alpha values, 0, 0,025, as you can see here. So you will scroll through the table to find the right alpha value. And then also you have your degrees of freedom one and the degrees of freedom two. So remember, we use DF1 in the presentation and on your, on your uh, table, it will say V1 for degrees of freedom one and V2 for degrees of freedom two. And then you go look for your degrees of freedom one at the top and the degrees of freedom two on your left and the value that corresponds with where both of them um, cross, that will be your critical value. And that's how you will do an ANOVA test. So, 
And once you have your critical value, then you can make a decision. If your test statistics is greater than your critical value, it will fall in this turquoise color. Then you're going to reject the null hypothesis. And if it falls in this white area, you do not reject the null hypothesis. So let's look at an example. You want to see if three different golf clubs yield different distances. You randomly select five measurements from a trial on an automated driving machine for each club. At 0 0.05 significance level, there is a difference in the mean. And they give us three uh, measures of the club uh, in terms of the distance they yielded. So we can see that club one yielded those distance. You know, most when you hit a golf, um, it moves uh, a certain distance. So uh, those are the distance calculated for club one and club two and club three. Now we need to test. So let's read the question. So we are given five measurements from every time. So we are given our N, which is our sample sizes, which is within each one of the groups. So we are now, we can already from here, we can already identify. We have our K, which is our group. There are three, we have N, because there are all five measurement, measurements in each. So that will be five. What else are we given? We are also given the level of significance, which is alpha, which is 0 0.05. So therefore it means if we have to go and find the critical value, we're going to look at alpha of 0 0.05 and we're going to find the degrees of freedom and come and find the critical value. So we have all the information that we need in order to answer our hypothesis test. So now, Remember the steps of hypothesis. You need to first step. Uh, the first step is to state your null hypothesis. And have I started the recording? Maybe I haven't, or oh, we did. I just wanted to check because sometimes you forget and we don't have a recording. So now let's start doing the hypothesis because the question is, is there a difference in the mean distance? So we just need to find out if there are difference among the three groups that we have. So the first thing that we, I need to do is I can visualize the data so that I can see where the points are. You don't have to do that in your exam. So I'm just demonstrating yeah, so here is my group one and I can see where the mean of group one is at and I can look at group two as well and I can see where the mean of group two is at and I can do the same with the group three and I can see where the mean of group three is at because I'm able to calculate the mean knowing that the mean is just the sum of observation divided by how many there are. So if I add all this observation for club one and divide them by five, I will get 20, uh, 249.2, which is that mean that I see there. And I can see that only three, uh, three distances were above the, the, the mean of one and two, two distances were below. And I can also look at I mean, um, club three and club two. And if I look at club two, only two values uh, one on the borderline, but almost two of them on the borderline, but two are above uh, the mean of club, club three. Um, and the other one is just on the line and the other one is also like, yeah, two of them are below the, the mean of that. But I can also calculate the mean of all this because I can take uh, the mean of club one, the mean of club two, plus the mean of club three, divide by three of them, uh, because there are three, so it will be the sum, which is 249 plus 226 plus 205, divided by three will give me 227. And I'm able to see that with regards to club one, club two, club three, the mean of all of them is 227, and I can see that club one, all the values are above the mean average and club two, only two values or two points are above the group um, 
uh, average as well. Uh, this is just for visualization purpose, nothing much um, that you need to know about. So now, there are a couple of things that I also need to calculate. So I know that I have calculated the, the means, I know what the means are, but there are a couple of other things that I will need because if I'm going to calculate SST, SSG and SSE, or MSG and MSE and MST in order for me to complete the entire table, there are formulas. So for example, we know that SSG is the sum of your mean of group one. So that one will be easy to calculate because I've got the mean of group one and I've got the overall mean. So I can calculate SSG, but we will get to that. In order for us to calculate SST, we need the sum of X squared. We will require the sum. So for us to calculate SST, we need the sum of X squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n. So here I can calculate the sum of each one. So the sum of club one is 1,246. The sum of club two is 1,300. The sum of club three is 1,029. So I have calculated that one part. But I also still need to calculate the sum of x squared. So to calculate the sum of x squared, I must just square each one of these values and square them and it's going to take me forever. I've already calculated that and that is the sum of x squared. So here you have the total. If I add all of them, they will give you your sum, your sum of x, which is the value that we have. And I already calculated the sum of x squared. So it means we are able to calculate the sum square total. Now, we know the mean, I just brought them from that side. Uh, those were the mean of uh, that we calculated from the beginning and the mean of all of them. Then we also have the sample size and your overall population and the number of groups. So some of this we already identified in the previous slide as well. So now let's calculate the sum square total which is the sum of x squared minus sum of x squared divided by n. So we did calculate that it was 778,771. I'm hoping that I am reading that correctly. There are so many numbers. Minus 3,405 squared, which is the sum squared, divide by 15, which is our n. And remember now, our n in this instance, we're going to use the capital letter n because it's all three of them. And that gives us 586. The sum square group, which is n, small n, so we need to change also that one. So this should be a capital letter n there because it needs to include all three groups. But with the sums group, sum the sum of groups, uh, we use the five times the mean of population one or club one minus the mean of the uh, population squared plus the mean of pop, uh, club two minus the population mean of two twenty seven squared plus until you get the rest of them and you calculate and multiply by five and the answer we get is 4,716.40. And that is our SS group. Then we can calculate the, SS, uh, the SSE. We know that it is the total minus the group. So we just take uh, 5836 minus 4716.4 and that gives us 119.6. So we do have our SSG and our SSE and our SST. We can calculate our mean square. So let's calculate our mean square group, which is your SS group divided by your degrees of freedom, which is your K minus one. And we know that our K is three and we have calculated our 
our SS group, which is 4716.4 divided by 3 minus 1, and we find the answer is 2358.2. And we can calculate the MSE, which will be your SSE divided by the degrees of freedom, which is K times N minus 1. So we know that um, K is 3 and N is 5 minus 1. And the answer we get is 93. So now we have the MS group. We can then move on and calculate our test statistic. And our test statistic is given by the mean square group divided by mean square error. So we do have our group divided by our error. So our test statistics will be 2358.2 divided by 93, which gives us 25.27. So now this is part of the table. So I have my table. I can go ahead and start doing my hypothesis testing because I've got all the information I require in order to continue with my hypothesis testing. So the first step, we state our null hypothesis and our alternative. The mean of the populations are equal. Not all means are equal. That is the alternative. We need to go and find the critical value. We have identified that our alpha was 0, 0,05. Our degrees of freedom for one, remember, we did calculate them actually because the degrees of freedom for one, so this will be V1 and this will be V2. So for one is three minus one, which is equal to two. So V1 will be equal to two and v2 will be equals to 5 minus 1 is 4 4 times 3 uh, 4 times 3 is 12 so we do have our v1 and v2 so we can go to the table our alpha is 0, 0,05 we go look for v1 of 2 and V2 of 12, and both where they meet, that is our critical value. And that's how you're going to identify your critical value. And that is your critical value. And you can draw up the graph because we're going to use that to state whether are we rejecting the null hypothesis or not. Remember, we did calculate the test statistics. So now, I don't have to go back and recalculate it. So there's our test statistic. <clears throat> it is 25.275. And we can locate where it falls. It falls somewhere way beyond 3.8 because our critical value creates a region of rejection. And it's somewhere in the region of rejection. And therefore, we go going to reject the null hypothesis at alpha of 0, 0,05 and conclude that because we are rejecting that they are not different or they are equal, we are rejecting that. Therefore, it means there is evidence that at least one mean differs from the rest of the groups. And that's how you do analysis of variance. Any question before I move to an Excel template? Uh, no, no questions at this point, Lizzie. Okay, so the same information you can use Excel as well to create an ANOVA, and this is a screenshot of that uh, Excel. As you can see here, yeah, there are your count, there are your sum, square measures. So if you go back to your sum square measures, all these values there, and the mean and the n. They are included on your Excel template as well. Once when you run when you run your Excel and you get an output that will look like this. So it will give you your sum square measures, your mean, and your variances. And then you can also find the table, the ANOVA table. So in your module, you are expected also to draw up this ANOVA table or to complete the ANOVA table if they give you. Uh, so they give you the groups, the error, and you can see all the values that we calculated are just 
as they are from here and it will give you the critical value. It will also give you the P value, but we're not going to talk about the P value. So it, you can go and find the critical value. It doesn't give you, sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. Um, if it gives you the critical value, it will give you the critical value and you use the critical value and the test statistic to make your decision. And that was just an example. So far, we have described one way analysis of an uh, uh, variance, and we looked at the logic of ANOVA, we looked at the assumptions, and how to find the test statistics uh, for the difference of groups. Uh, so now let's look at an example from one of the past exam paper so that we can practice. So if looking at this question, from May, June, it says a partially completed analysis of, ANOVA, of variance, which is ANOVA table for a completely randomized design is shown. So what is very important as well when you read the question, these are the keywords that you need to always look. Randomized design will only have your, your groups and error. And in this instance, the groups are called treatment and the error. Um, you will see later on when we look at uh, the experiment or uh, design, then you will see a different table. So this table, it provides us with the source, it provides us with the sum square measures, the mean square measures, and the F-test. So there are question marks as well. We need to be able to know how to complete the entire table without panicking. If you remember your degrees of freedom for treatment, if I can draw the same table just here next door to it as a generic table, I'm gonna call this the source and I'm gonna call this treatment error and total. Now my treatment and error, my treatment and total are almost exactly the same. But there are two different measures. OK, so we know that we have a degrees of freedom. We always need to remember that the degrees of freedom for treatment is the number of groups you have minus one. For the error is the number of groups times the sample size minus one. For the population, it's the total population minus one. So now, if you look at the degrees of freedom here, you should already be mindful of what is happening. So it means the six is the same as K minus one is equals to six. If I need to find out what my K is, I can always say K is the same as six plus one, which means K is seven. So there were seven groups in this data set because of that six. In order for me to find my error, I know that my degrees of freedom for error, so degrees of freedom for error, it's given by K times N minus one, but I don't know what my N is. It's easy to find the degrees of freedom because uh, this value here, the K minus one plus the K times N minus one should give me N minus one. So if I have this question mark there, I can also use, I can say it's 41 minus six, and that will give me the, uh, the error, the degrees of freedom there. So which will be what is 41 minus six, 41 minus 6, it's 35. It's 35. So that is my degrees of freedom here. So I can also come here and put it there. It's 35. So I know what my K is. So I can also come and write there. K is 7, uh, which I don't have to use it anymore. I just need it because I think we might need it some way when we answer some of this question. So what else can I do? They didn't give me this value, which is the sum square error. So I am told what my SS, SSE, uh, SST is. I am given, oh, I'm going to call this not T, but I'm going to call it group 
for argument's sake, so that then I have two different distinct T's. Um, and then I'm also given SSE, which I don't have, so we need to find SSE, but I'm also told what SST is. So I know that SSE is SST minus SSG. So if I have my SST and I have my SSG, I can just substitute 46.5 minus 17.5. And that will give you 46.5 minus 17.5 equals 24.5. 24.5. So the answer here is 24.5. Now, I can calculate my MS error. Now, my S MST and MS, because I need to find my test statistic, my F test as well. So, calculating MS. Just Lizzie? Yes. Sorry, I'm interrupting. For SSE, I got 29. You got 29. What did I do yeah. wrong? It's 46. Oh, sorry. My bad. I think I calculated something wrong. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's 20. 29. 29. 29. Just 29, right? Just 29, yes. Yeah. I think I pressed something wrong on the calculator as well. Okay. So that is 29. So in order for us to calculate the F test, we need MS. We need MS. MSG and we also need MS, MSE. But here they didn't put a question mark. It doesn't matter whether they put a question mark or not. The fact that on the F there is a question mark and in the question as well there is a an F test. So we need to calculate MSG, which is your SSG divided by your degrees of freedom, which is your K minus one. So our SSG is 17.5 divided by our degrees of freedom of six because already they have given it to us. So you go and calculate that. Once you've calculated that, you can also calculate your MSE, which is your SSE divided by your K N minus one, which is also We've calculated that, which was 29, divided by 35. We did calculate, and that will give you the answer. So let's calculate. So 17.5 divided by 6. What do you get? 2.91. Three point nine one six. Okay. I'm going to leave it at four decimal. And what is 29 divided by 35? That's a 0 0.8286. 0 0.8286. So now we're not done. We need to calculate the F the F state, which is the test statistic. Let's calculate the F state, which is your MSG divided by your MSE. So our MSG is 2.9167 divided by 0 0.8286. Two point nine one six seven divide by, and we might have a problem because we might have a problem of rounding off too quickly. Zero point eight two eight six equal three point five two. I'm just gonna leave it at two decimals. Three point five two. So we have most of the 
we have that value there, that value there, and that value there. So we completed our ANOVA table. So let's look at the answers. Which statement is incorrect? The number of treatment involved in the experiment is six. We're looking for the incorrect answer. The number of treatments involved. So how many treatments do we have? That is our K. How many treatments do we have? We oh, only seven. have seven. So this is the incorrect one. But we can also uh, check the logic of other questions. The total sample size is equals to 42. The sample size is N, big capital letter N. In this instance, I'm going to use big capital letter N to differentiate between the total and the sample size because there is a small N and a capital letter N. So 41, how did we get 41? 41 is the, same, is, is the same as N minus 1 which is equals to 41, which n will be equals to 42. So the total sample size is 42, right? That will be correct. The mean square of treatment, which is MST, is 2.9167. What did we get? 2.1967, right? That is correct. Because our MSG is is our treatment. Since we have got two T's, we changed it to MSG. Mm. Um, the, the mean squares for error, which is our MSE, is 0, 0.8286, which is what we calculated, which is correct. And our test statistics, we also did calculate it, which is correct. So, and that's how some of your questions will look like in the exam. And the same will be the same or apply when you are calculating also the ANOVA for the experimental design. Okay, any question? Uh, I wanted to find out, do we get these formulas for the yes. exam? Okay. Yes, you do get the formulas. So now, because you're writing an online exam, depending if this year we, they go back to normal and they say venue-based, you, you will receive formulas. For the online exams, you just need to bring your own piece of paper that has all the, the formulas close by that you can use as a reference. Like if, for example, your lecturer might send you closer to the exam to say these are the formulas and sheet that you can use to answer the exam questions because with the formulas they also like remove all the noises all the other irrelevant formulas that you might find and then give you the only formulas that you might need for that exam as well but it will also depend on your lecturer but formulas are given um okay so now let's look at how we do a randomized block design so similar to the one way anova for um the randomized design, there is one way you can create blocks within the groups. So we are uh, with this one, we test for equal population means as well, but we want to control for possible variation for the second factor. And the levels of the second fact, uh, fact, secondary factor are also called what uh, the blocks. So because we're adding another level, because we are going to split the total variation into those three because to accommodate the blocks that we are splitting the, the, the levels with. So we're going to say our sum square total or the total variation will be given by a variation among the group, variation among the block and the errors. Okay, so. We have used those three before, SST, SSA, and SSE, and we know that SSE is SST minus S, um, SS group. Now, because we do have the block, we also need to take that into consideration. 
So the formula for SST stays as is, the formula for SSA stays as is, and we only just need to make adjustment when we calculate SSE. We're going to say uh, we need to accommodate the block. So in terms, instead of just saying SS, SST is SS, sorry, SSE is SST minus SSA, we're just going to say it's SSA plus S. SBL, which is for the block. Okay. However, in terms of finding the degrees of freedom and calculating the MS blocks, the formula will look different because then it will be SSB divided by the degrees of freedom. And here the degrees of freedom will be R minus one. And for the among the groups will be C minus one. And then for the errors, it will be R minus one times R, uh, C minus one, which are your number of groups. Uh, your C will be the number of populations that you have, and R will be the number of blocks that you have as well. So let's look at an example of an ANOVA table of randomized block, and that is SSB, SSA, SSE, and SST. And your degrees of freedom, R minus 1, C minus 1, and R minus 1 times C minus 1. And for the total, it will be uh, uh, your number of population times your number of blocks, which will just give you the total number of observations that you have, minus 1. And when we calculate the test statistic, you're going to have to calculate it for both the amongst the block and among the group. Um, by for the blocks, you're going to say MSB divided by MSE, and for among the group, we're going to say MSA divided by MSE. So let's do the test. So the mean, the hypothesis testing will still state the mean uh, population one and mean population two are do, uh, the same. And your hypothesis, your alternative hypothesis will state that uh, not all populations are equal and you're still going to calculate. So you're going to be asked to calculate the test statistic for among the test statistics uh, uh, among the block or among the group. So you just need to always remember that. So if they say calculate the test statistics among the groups, then you need to know that you're going to be using the MS uh, among the group, which will be your SSA, and among the block, we will use the SSB. And you're also going to find the critical value and make a, uh, a conclusion, either you reject the null hypothesis or not. Uh, the method of the previous session still applies. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here you are given an ANOVA table in a randomized block design, and there it is, the keyword block design. And I can also see that on my table, you will you have three things. Previously, you only had two things. So now I have three things, so I'm looking at the block design. In, it's shown, it is shown below, where the treatment will refer to the blood pressure and the drugs and the blocks refer to different groups of men with high blood pressure. Um, uh, use the given ANOVA table to answer the question. So, can we infer at 5% level of significance that the treatment differ? So that is what the question is asking. So the first step that we need to do, number one, is to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. It's easy. Null hypothesis, the mean one is equal to mean two, it's equal to mean three. How many are there? There are so many. I'm just going to go and say it's equal to mean n. And the alternative, not all. Population mean. I can just use mu. 
Not all population mean. Ah, the same. That is our hypothesis. We are given number two. Our alpha is 0 0.05. Therefore, we can go and find our degrees of freedom uh, or our critical value. So our degrees of freedom for V1 and V2, remember we take them from here. Now, you need to be very, very careful with this. Remember now we have treatments and blocks. So you just need to always remember that blocks it's R minus one, it will be your V1 and groups will be your V2, right? So let's go and do that. So our blocks, oh, you can also just, it, it, it will not really matter that much, but let's say our, our V1 is four, our V2 is six. We can also go in and, and check if we do the vice versa one. So let's go find the critical value. So V1, we set the answers are four and six. Four and six, and we said we can also check if it's six and four will give us the same answer. So four is our V1 and six, our V2. So the, for this one, we get, 4.53. If we use the other the other side, we said it's six and four. Can you see that it doesn't give you the same answer? It will give you two different answers and that will confuse you. So you just need to make sure that you assign the right V1s and V2s to the right groups as well. So in this instance, we can say this is our V1 and this is our V2. Um, and go and answer the. And we found that it is 5.43. And our F of 0, 0.05, which is our critical value, it is four comma, what did we say? Five three, four comma five three. Now we need to find our test statistics. You can see that they have two different test statistics, but we need to read the question carefully. It says, are they different for the test? So it means we only need, we only require that one. <gasps> Actually, I even did it all wrong because we're not supposed to take this one. We're supposed to take the degrees of freedom of error, not of, so V1 and V2 is your error, which is 22, sorry, my bad. I used the wrong, the wrong number, it's 24. So therefore, this is not also correct since I used the wrong one. Your V1 is for the treatment because we're doing the mean difference for the treatment. So we must remember it's not the same as the previous one. So V1 is for the treatment and V2 will be the error. And uh, we need to go back because we did it all wrong. So V1, we said it is 4 and V2 is 24. So it's 4. And we need to go to 24. And where they meet. 2.78. 2.78. Now we know what our our test statistic is. Our test statistic is F is equals to O F stat. We've calculated that it is 14.6. I'm going to leave it at two decimal, 14.61. Now we need to go and make a decision. So I can just draw. So for this F test, always a one-sided test. So there will be your F critical value here. 
your F critical value, which is 2,78. And anything that falls in the shaded area, we're going to reject. So 14.61 14 falls in the shaded area. So we're going to state that. Therefore, our decision will be we reject the null hypothesis at alpha of 0 0.05. And we conclude that there is sufficient evidence that not all mean population are the same. And that's how you will conduct a hypothesis testing. Let's look at another. So this is the same, sorry. That's how you state your null hypothesis, how you find your critical value. So I just did it manually, but you can see that we followed all the steps. And we can conclude that we reject the null hypothesis at least two or th uh, more than two treatments differ or they are not the same. Okay, so in the exam you do get tables like this. They will already have calculated and completed everything. They just ask you the questions. So all you just need to remember is know what is calculated where. How do we calculate the treatment degrees of freedom? How do we calculate the block degrees of freedom? How do we find um, the um, the uh, critical values. How do we state the null hypothesis? So looking at these two questions, or this question, question number 12, it says, given the information in the table, which one of the following statement is incorrect? Number one, is that true or false? Based on what we know about stating hypothesis testing for ANOVA. Is that statement correct or incorrect? The statement will be correct because it's always correct. remember, yes, always remember that when you do ANOVA, the null hypothesis will state that all population means are equal. Okay. Um, the alternative, is that statement correct or incorrect? It's correct. It will be correct because it has to state that at least two or it can say not all of them differ or all of them are not the same or at least two means differ from the rest of the other groups. The number of blocks used in this treatment is three. Is that true? How do we then find the blocks? The number of blocks, the degrees of freedom, we, do we still remember how do we find that? It's C minus one, minus one. for the treatment is R minus one. So are there three number of blocks? Yes. Yes, that is true because C minus one should be equals to two in that instance, therefore, your C will be equals to three because if I move one to the other side, it will add to two and it will create three. The number of treatment used is four. Is that correct? That's incorrect. That will be the incorrect one because there are four degrees of freedom treatment. Therefore, they are R minus one. R minus one. So then it is R is equals to five. The number of observations collected in this experiment is 15. That's uh, true. That will be true because remember that it will be R minus 1 times C minus 1. Um, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm using the error one. Now. RC minus 1. RC, it's RC. RC minus 1. Yes. So it's rc which is three times five it will give us 15. 
Am I doing something wrong now? Yeah, let me not even go there. Okay. And this is another example of how they can ask you questions in the exam. Now, if you look at this, they give you some details about the one way and over some calculations that they already did. They give you your N, your mean, your standard deviation. You don't even need the standard deviation. S1, S2, S3. But they give you that. And then, oh, sample 1, sample 2, sample 3. I'm not sure what they refer to S1, S2, S3. Then they also give you your sum square total and sum square error. And they're asking you, calculate your test statistic. What they haven't given you here is what? Your MS, your MSG or MS, MS yes, they didn't MS. give you your SSG, they didn't give you your MSG, but if you can remember that SSE is equals to SST minus SSG, you can find SSG, right? Because if I move SSG this side, it will be positive, and I move SST this SSE this side, it will be negative. And then I can just substitute the values. So I have 560 minus 693. And that is 133. Minus 133. So if I have my SSG and my SSE, then I can also calculate my You should be able to calculate your MSG, MSG, but now my MSG will be negative. Otherwise, you can use that from the formula. So let's see if we use okay. the formula, if we can get also the SS. Remember that your SSG is given by your N times the sum of your mean observations minus mean groups which are those groups that you are given minus the mean of all of them squared so now if i you need you can calculate the mean which will be that mean that we're going to substitute there which is 40 plus 48 20 plus 48 plus 50 equals 138 Divide by 3, which is equals to 46. So you can also calculate it and say there are, what is your N? N is 10 plus 10 plus 10 is that, oh no. N will be this small, it's 10, because then we're going to multiply everything with that so it's 10 and we're going to say 40 minus 46 squared plus because it's the summation 48 minus 46 squared plus 50 minus 46 squared close bracket and we can calculate everything. So I'm just going to open my calculator. And do it all at once. Uh, 40. That is if it will allow me to include all of them. In. I get 48 minus 46 
Don't look like it's. Nope. Nope. Squid. Books. Open bracket. 50. Minus. 46. Close bracket. Squid. And close bracket. And equal. I get 560. Yes, I got the same as well. Unless if these people calculated SST wrong, they mm. used, that is why that it will not make sense to get a negative answer. Mm. So our, yes. We, so your SS, SSG, it's 560, right? So this, they did something wrong there. That is why I'm, I was wondering why would it be a negative value? Cannot be a negative value there. Okay, but then it's fine because now we have SSG and, and, and SSE, we can calculate M, MSG, which is SSG divided by degrees of freedom. Maybe these are the degrees of freedom. I am not sure now also with this question that they have. So I'm going to use this as the degrees of freedom. So that will be five. No, it cannot be. Five minus one. It cannot be. So there are three groups. So it will oh. be K minus one. Oh, OK. It is K minus one. So our SSG is 560 divided by our groups. There are three. So it's three minus one. And what is five? 560 divided by two. It's 280. That will be 280. And we can do the same with MSE. Uh, MSE is SSE over K times N minus 1. Our SSE is 693 over our K. There are groups. Uh, there are 3 times 10 minus 1, which is 693 over 9 times 3. Is 27. So 693, 693 divided by 27 is 25.66666. 25.6666. I'm just going to keep four decimals. So I'm going to remove one of the six and put the seven. Okay. So, you know, the question was calculate the F test statistic. F that will be given by your MSG divided by divided by MSE. MSG is 280 divided by 25.6667. 20. 280 divided by 25.6667 equals 10.90. 10 I think I must leave it for decimals for now. 909. And if I leave it to four decimal, then it will be 9091. Okay, so let's look at the answers. So that is the correct answer. So the tricky part here is to also be mindful of the values that you have, because if you would have taken what you have here and did what I did initially, then you would have gotten the wrong answer. So this is misleading. Uh, we can just ignore that. Um, if you do, verify your data and you can see that your SST will be smaller than your SSE, then it means there is something wrong because we know that SST 
it's your SSG plus your SSE. That's what one thing that we know of. Okay, so those are typical questions that you will get in the exam when it comes to the ANOVA. I do hope you can find more activities that you can go through. So just in closing, and to wrap up, we have uh, to the end of the session now, we have described the one way ANOVA, we looked at the logic behind the analysis of variants, we looked at the assumptions, how do we do some calculations in terms of finding the test statistics and making the decision, therefore it means doing the hypothesis testing to test for the difference amongst the groups. We also looked at the randomized block design, uh, where we looked at the block effect in terms of how we do the test of differences when we include also some blocks. Um, any questions, any comments, any query? We have one minute left. Are there any questions? No, no questions. It was a good session, actually. Um, I think it's just more to practice to get used to using the formulas as well. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So if there are no questions, uh, we can go ahead and enjoy our evening. Have a lovely evening and bye. Bye. Thank you. Please don't forget to um, complete the register.